Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to continue the discussion on pathogenesis. So in the previous two videos, we have discussed the excess and deficiency patterns, the impairments of yin and yang. These two categories, actually, we discuss the disease from different aspects. The first of the excess and deficiency. We talk about the disease from the struggle between the antipathogenic qi and the pathogenic qi. So that's the we talk about the the fighting between your army and the enemy. And then when we talk about the yin yang nature, the impairment of yin and yang, we actually describe the results of the fighting or the process. Of the the fighting during this fight the manifestation of the fight the manifestation of the struggle presents as in patterns or yang pattern so that's the relationship between the excess deficiency and yin yang nature that's why we want to at the the excess and deficiency, we talk about who is fighting, who is who's fighting with each other. From yin and yang, we talk about the nature, the process of the fighting, the process of the struggle between the healthy qi and the pathogens, the fighting, the struggle between your immune system and the pathogens. In this process, the, the, the struggle manifests as in pattern or yang pattern. Such as if the flu, we use the, the common code of flu as an example, the pathogens attach our body. It can be either cold, coldness or emptiness or dryness. No matter what kinds of pathogen, so when they invade our body, we become sick. And in this process, the sickness of the flu can have different symptoms, such as fatigue or tiredness, loose stool, or mild fever. The other patient can have high fever, sore throat, phlegm constipation so as you can see these different symptoms and that's from the flu from the pathogen so this disease of the fever of, of the flu is the your antipathogenic qi fights with the flu fights with the pathogens of either dampness or coldness or even wind depends on what kind of pathogen of this process but in the meantime when we fight with the pathogens your body presents with different symptoms and these different symptoms can be separated can be divided into in pattern or yang pattern that's why we need to study both of them of the excess and deficiency and the yin and yang so from this video, we're going to continue the, the discussion of the disorder of axons, qi, and blood. In order to study the impairment of axons, we need to revise what axons. What axons in, in our Chinese medicine theories? Axons can refer to innate axons and also the required essence, the acquired essence. The essence is the combination of the innate essence, essence and the acquired essence. And these two essence can represent as the, the essence of the for the infer, for the fertility purpose, such as the spoon the spoons of male or menstruation of female. 
and also can be the axons in the stores in the Zhangfu organs. So that's the axons. So when we, since we know where the axons, the axons deficiency will, repre will present in these different aspects. The essence deficiency can refer to innate essence, can refer to acquired essence. The innate essence is something you can't change it. What's the reason for innate essence? It can be either your parents are still young when they have lived, or your, your parents in the in their age, age essence deficiency from the diet, the diet of your parents also can be either from the innate aspect, from the acquired aspect, but from your the diet because the acquired essence mostly. Lost. For the essence deficiency, the patient can represent the patient can present as like the low girl or slow body develop, such as they grow the height of the birth of, of the, the kids grows much slower than they're supposed to. It is in male or female such as the low sperm count, these are all considered as essence deficiency. Essence deficiency also will cause T deficiency or blood deficiency, because the Qi and blood also can generate from essence. That's the relationship when we study the, the theory of essence Qi and blood, right? They don't have enough chi. They are saying that chi is not enough in the head. They are more fatigue, tiredness. All these kinds of deficiency symptoms can reflect the essence deficiency. Since the innate essence is stored in the kidney, in our body, the most important essence deficiency is the kidney essence deficiency. The kidney essence deficiency will cause the other organs essence deficiency as well. The key, what is the source of the kidney deficiency? Then we, if the question is what is the source of the kidney deficiency or what is the reason of the kidney deficiency? We need to think about where the kidney essence comes from. The kidney essence comes from innate essence, which from your parents. Also comes from acquired essence. So the the innate essence need to be nourished by the acquired essence from the spleen. So the kidney essence deficiency. We need to focus. We need to we need to focus on. The kidney and the spleen. That's in the during our treatments. Why for some infertilities, we use the treatment for for the spleen for the digestive system. That's because the kidney essence also need to be nourished by the spleen essence. We need to get acquired essence enough. That's why the treatment. We always focus on the kidney and spleen. The next, the essence stagnation. The essence stagnation mostly refers to the difficulty of the discharge of sperms. The reason why is because the essence in Mandarin, because Jing, the essence and the sperm in male, 
that's the same character in, in Mandarin. So essence is stagnation, mostly refers to the difficulty discharge of spoons. So for this problem, we need to find out what's the cause. It might be overwork, it might be bad habits, it also might be blastasis or dampness block certain meridian or certain pathways. So that's the, the symptoms. The, the patient also may feel painful in in low abdomen or even in the external natalia. In the treatments, we can focus on the kidney, we can focus on the liver, depends on or focus on activating the blood, it depends on what's the cause. Then we will focus on the, the cause and treat the roots, the root cause. Qi deficiency. Qi deficiency is one of the most important impairment in our in our body and also the most important cause of the disease. Qi deficiency the the disorder of qi refers to two. The, the first is qi deficiency. The second is the, the abnormal qi movements. Actually for this category, disorder of essence, qi and blood, even body fluid. We actually separate them into deficiency, and the second is the abnormal movements. Such as the essence we have discussed just now, because essence deficiency, then we talk about the essence stagnation. The essence stagnation is actually the abnormal movements of essence. That's why we said it, the difficult discharge. Then the disorder of qi, we can separate them into qi deficiency, which means they don't have enough qi. Also, can be abnormal qi movements. The abnormal qi movements, the abnormal qi movements also very important because there are many clinical symptoms and refers to qi, the abnormal movements. Firstly, the qi deficiency refers to the weakness or the, the volume of qi is not enough, or the function of qi is weak, hypofunction of the qi. So in this situation, what are the symptoms of this situation? The patient may feel fatigue while they walk for a while, they feel tired, same as the the boy in the picture. The patient may have dizziness, may have spontaneous sweat. That's because the confining function of the qi is weak. And also the, the patient may easier to, have to, cut, to catch the cold. The, the patient may be easier to catch the cold with pale face, pale tongue, and weak blood, uh, pulse. So these are the causes of qi deficiency. And these are the symptoms of qi deficiency. And then when we talk about the causes of qi deficiency, we need to think about where does the qi come from. The qi may be from innate, right? We call it the innate qi and acquired qi that's similar to the innate essence and acquired essence. The innate qi is generated from innate essence. So the deficiency of innate qi is actually because of the deficiency of innate essence. That's why these two will affect each other. But apart from the innate qi, 
the qi also from our diet, which is the acquired qi. So if you don't have enough qi, we need to focus on the acquired qi as well, which also from your food. And also deficiency, the qi deficiency also can due to the regulate the qi flow, which organs in charge of the qi? The lung. That's why the dysfunction of the lung, spleen or kidney can cause qi deficiency. So as you can see here, we include we include the zhang fu theory, qi theory. We talk about the qi deficiency. Qi deficiency also can reflect into essence deficiency. That's why the symptoms also can reflect the, the slow growth of the human body or infertilities. That's because these are all combined together, even the blood deficiency, although now we when we study, we separate them. But in the clinics, in the they also can change into each other. And the qi deficiency, qi also can separate into yin and yang. That's why we said the essence can generate the qi. Qi can divide it into qi can be divided into yin and yang. Right, that's the relationship between atoms, qi and yin yang. So qi deficiency can be yin qi deficiency or yang qi deficiency. Yin qi deficiency can reflect into heat symptoms. Yang qi deficiency can reflect into coldness or cold symptoms. Now, if you see, this for these deficiency. We include the study in the previous video of yin and yang impairments. The abnormal qi movements, the first one, qi stagnation. Qi stagnation refers to the poor flow or poor circulation of qi. So the qi didn't circulate, circulate well and the reason of qi stagnation can be the emotion, such as depressed. Also can be the path pathogens, such as phlegm, dampness, or excess heat, or blastasis, or static blood. So these pathogens block the pathways of qi. The pathway of qi, where is the pathway of qi? can be the meridian, it also can be the sanjiao. So once the pathway will block, then the qi, the movement of qi will be slower or it will stop. So when the qi stop, stop, because qi block. When the qi moves slower, the circulation becomes slower we call qi stagnation when qi stagnation the symptoms can be varies from different organs because the qi can be the liver qi can be a lung qi can be spleen qi so here we need when we talk about qi stagnation we need to further discuss which organs it, ref, it affected especially the liver and the spleen, so the lung, because these organs are related to qi movements. So lung qi stagnation, the patient may feel a pressed chest or cough or panting. The liver qi stagnation, the patient can reflect into the emotion problem, such as depressed or the feelings in the on the both sides of the ribs, on the, on the sides of the abdomen. That's because of the liver meridian moves it. 
also liver cheese stagnation in female they can feel the distending feeling in the breast especially before the period that's the liver cheese stagnation the spleen and stomach cheese stagnation can present as the distending feeling of the abdomen or fullness or painful uh, abdominal pain or constipation that's because the qi doesn't move the stool like all these some different symptoms can represent can present qi stagnation as you can see we gave you many different symptoms because in the qi stagnation may happen in different organs no matter what kinds of symptoms no matter no matter which organs it affects the qi stagnation the key characteristics the, the key symptoms of qi stagnation is oppressed pressed distending or pain so these are the key characteristics of qi stagnation especially for the qi stagnation due to qi deficiency the patient will the the symptoms might be mild qi stagnation also can be excess qi that's because too much too much qi moves in the pathway it can block you can cause the blockage then the patient will have worse symptoms of these breast or pain this ending feeling qi the second the qi thinking and the qi counter flow these two are actually the opposite sides of the qi movements qi thinking means that the qi move downwards too much so the descending function of the descending the descending direction too much or it, it also can be described as the qi ascent not enough the ascending function the ascending direction the ascending movement of qi is not enough so as you can see here we actually describe the same stuff qi thinking the ascending movements is not enough the descending movements is too much and we see these two aspects they all consider qi thinking the some of the qi is supposed to move upwards but they didn't move upwards enough on the other way on on the other hand you also consider as sinking because it's, it's supposed to move up but it moves not enough the movement so this is the qi sinking especially for the one ascending movement is not enough it can reflect in the the upper body especially for the head the spleen qi, spleen qi could not move qi upwards enough so the patient could have dizziness or vertigo or tinnitus so for this kinds of disease how could we going to treat them we're going to move the qi upwards the qi is sinking due to the descending movement the excess descending movement the patient may feel the frequent urination, frequent bowel movements, so can be the dislocation of internal organs such as the stomach, the kidney, or the uterus. The dislocation. 
the third, the qi counterflow. Qi counterflow and qi sinking is opposite. So counterflow means the qi, the ascending movement of qi is too much, or the descending is not enough. Move too much, which is not enough. Such as the lung. The lung qi is supposed to move up. That's how from, from our breathing movements, inhale and exhale. Then you move in, suddenly move out. In the meantime, when you move out, it's moving up. So the lung qi is supposed to move up, but if the lung, if the lung qi move up too much, it will cause the The flow of the stomach. The stomach chi is supposed to move downwards to the insect to the insect intestines, but now the chi move upwards. It will cause nausea, vomiting, hiccups. So that's how that's how we see these kinds of symptoms. How we understand this. We call it the stomach qi counterflow, or if the liver qi move upwards. The patient will feel the beating of the head, the red face, red eyes, because of excess qi. The excess qi, when they move to the head, they can accumulate into heat. Symptoms. Qi counterflow mostly in the head. Although sometimes we also we also can see deficiency, but most of the time it's excess. For for the deficiency, it can be the the lung or the, the stomach. But such as the liver, most most of them is excess. Qi block. Qi block is the the fullest stage of qi stagnation. So when the qi stagnation and then we develop into a more severe situation, it becomes a blockage. So qi stagnation means the qi the flow of the qi move slower than it's supposed to. The qi blockage means the qi stop due to the stagnation due to other pathogens. The symptoms of the qi block most of the time we, we see the patient in the unconscious situation, so such as coma. Especially for the the cause of a qi block can be extreme emotion or phlegm or other pathogens, external exogenous pathogens. The last one, qi desertion. Qi desertion means that the qi we losing the qi. Especially for the acute stage. So for this, qi desertion is very similar to the yin and yang, the yin and yang collapse. The qi desertion, the, the symptoms can be sweating and the eye was closed, the eye was closed and fatigue. And lost, lose the control of the urine or the stool and weak pulse. As you can see, the symptoms, these symptoms are quite similar to the yin and yang collapse. So, qi desertion can be yin qi desertion or yang qi desertion. That's similar to yin and yang collapse.
as you can see here, we actually use different terms to describe one single stuff. That's why they have some relationship into uh, they have some relationship among each other. And the cheap social mostly happen in the in the situation of violence and violent pathogen for chronic diseases consuming the antipathogenic qi the patient become weak that's why it causes qi desertion so these are the discussion on the disorder of essence and qi for these two especially for qi disorder is the most important parts of your study here. In the next video, we're going to continue the discussion of this order of blood and also we're going to talk about the relationship among these three disorder these three essence, qi and blood, the disorder of these three. Thank you guys.